Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is second of May, two thousand and twenty-one. And the subject we are studying today is mathematics, syllabus D four zero two four. It's O levels mathematics, and today we have set our hearts to solve a paper one. Uh, today we have selected October November two thousand twenty-one two paper. This paper belongs from the zone two, so it's our paper one. Two hours is a uh, is the allowed time for this paper, and you cannot use calculator in this paper. So let's start this paper, and here we go. So the first question coming up on your screen, um, October November two thousand twenty one two paper. So the first question is showing up on your screen. So let me increase the size, make it one fifty. Okay. So here we come. So the first question, question number one, is evaluate a uh, four by five minus two by three. That's the A part, and in the B part, he says it's a. Uh, let me show you how much marks we have. It's a one mark question, and evaluate two point seven into zero point two, and it's how much? It's also one mark question. So this is the question number one. Two parts of the question number one. Very easy. Let me show you how I have solved them. Okay, so go. So the question number one, four by five minus two by three. We will make the denominator the same. The LCM is fifteen. Five and three. The LCM is fifteen. So I will multiply the first fraction and numerator and denominator both with the three. And in the second fraction. Numerator and denominator both will be multiplied with the five. So I will have twelve by fifteen minus ten by fifteen. Now I can write a single uh, denominator. Twelve minus ten uh, that will be two. So the final answer will be two by five. Two by fifteen. Sorry, two by fifteen will be the final answer. So this is how you do the A part. In the B part, the question was. 2.7 multiply 0.2, so I will remove the decimal. It will become 27 by 10. In the place of the decimal, I will put one, and after the decimal, there is only one digit, so I will put one zero. But if the same, I will do with the 0.2. It will become 2 by 10. When you multiply, the numerators are multiplied with the numerators. The denominators are multiplied with the denominators. So you will have 54 divided by 100. Now the decimal is 54, and then we have the decimal. So when you divide it with 100, uh, it will move two steps to the left. So the final answer will be 0.54. Hopefully you have understood this. So let's move to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number two. Question number two has only one uh, one part. Okay. So here we go. We have the question number two. Find the fraction which lies exactly halfway between three by five and five by seven. Give your answer in its simplest form. So the strategy is very simple. You add these two fractions, and whatever the answer you get, you divide it with two. So this is how you find the uh, the fraction which is exactly halfway between three by five and five by seven. Let me show you my work. I have done this, and let's see. So here we go. Question number two is showing up on your screen now. Okay. So three uh, by five plus five by seven. Put this in a bracket, and I will divide it with the two. So now here you have to add two fractions. Their LCM is thirty-five. Denominator's LCM is thirty-five. So I will make the denominator thirty-five in each fraction. So in the first fraction, I will multiply with seven. In the numerator, seven, uh, seven will be multiplied with the denominator. In the second fraction, the numerator and denominator they both will be multiplied with the five. So we will have twenty-one by thirty-five plus twenty-five divided by thirty-five because the they have the same uh, denominator. So you can write a single denominator. So now it will become forty-six by thirty-five divided by two. Convert this division sign into multiplication sign. This fraction after that division sign that will flip, that will reciprocate, and so you will have 45 divided by 35 multiplied one by two. So that two and the 46 will be cancelled. You will have 23 by 35. Hopefully you have understood. 
Let's move to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number and three. And let me show you. Here we have question number three, first part. Do you have to factorize 12 t square minus 4 t? This is the A part and the B part is also given. Okay, let's let's do them step by step. So we are here we have the first part. So 12 t square minus 4 t. Let me show you how I have done this. So you have to factorize them basically. So here we go. So 12 t square minus 40, you have to factorize them. So you can take common, you see 12 and four, the biggest table in which both of them will come, that is four. So four will be common. T is also common. So take the 40 common, you will have three T minus one. So what's left inside, this is always decided by the VN. 12 t square divided by 40, which you have taken common, the answer will be 3 t minus 40 divided by 40, the answer will be minus 1. So 4 t bracket 3 t minus 1 bracket close is the answer. That's the question number 3, A part. Let's move to the next question. The next part is the B part. On your screen, you can see the B part. Here we have uh, two terms. Each term has a bracket. The members inside the bracket, they are uh, kind of same, but their signs are not same. So one very good thing you can do is you can take a common from this bracket, the second bracket, when a negative will come here, their order will change. The Y will become negative and the X will become positive. Let me show you, this is how you factorize it. And let me show you. Okay. So question number three, B part, you can see A and A bracket X minus Y bracket close plus B bracket Y minus X bracket close. So I will take a negative outside. When I will take the negative outside, this Y will become negative, that will become positive. Now you can see these two brackets, they are exactly same. So I can take them common. From here, I will have A. From here, I will have minus B. So this is how this B part is factorized. Hopefully you understand this. Okay, so let's move to the C part. Let's see what the C part says. So here we have the question number uh, three, C part. It says X square minus two X minus three. You have to do the midterm breaking here and you have to factorize it. Let me show you how the midterm breaking is done here. So we are doing the C part. So in the question number three, C part, you can see X square minus two X minus three. I will multiply the extreme terms. X square will multiply with the three. And let me show you. So what will happen? This, this will multiply, X square will multiply with the three. And that then you will get three X square. This three you will get. I will write the factors of three. The factors of three, uh, where are the, uh, where are those? I, my camera just disappeared. Okay, so I will write the factors of three and you see there, there is only one factor and one multiplied three gives a three. With the third time I have a negative sign so I will write here subtract, this is my rough work. And whenever I write subtract here, I, I, I have to choose the different, uh, the signs, I take the different signs. So I want by subtraction minus two. So from uh, one into three, I have to get minus two. So with the three, I will put negative and with the one, I will put positive. So here you will have X square minus three X plus one X minus three. So you see the midterm has been broken and the extreme terms are still the same. So from the first two terms, I can take the X common and then I will have X minus three inside the bracket. From the last two term plus one is taken as common. You will have X minus three. Now X minus three bracket can be taken as common from here, you will have X and from here you will have plus one. So this is how you do the midterm breaking. Hopefully you have understood this. You have done a lot of practice already. So this was the question number three, A, B and C part. So, okay. so let's move to the next part. This is the question number four coming up on your screen. It says, write these lengths in order of size, starting with the smallest. I tell you the technique. The technique is they all should be because you can look at these uh, measurements. The measurements have different units, so you cannot compare them easily. So uh, the best thing to do is to convert them into the same unit. 
kilometers. You can convert them either all of them into the kilometer. You can convert all of them into centimeter. You can convert all of them into millimeter, or you can convert all of them into meter, whatever you like. So, but the, my technique is that I will convert them all of them into centimeters, and it will be very easy. So, if you want to convert this into kilometer, this is kilometer. If you want to convert it to into the centimeter. So in one kilometer, we have 100,000 centimeter. So simply multiply this with 100,000 centimeter. It will be converted into centimeter. This is already centimeter. This is in the millimeter. So if you want to convert it, you divide it with the 10. If you want to convert millimeters into centimeter, divide it with the 10. And this is meter. So multiply this number with 100 and it will be converted into centimeters. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you my work. and. Question number four. So here you can see I have multiplied 0 0.043 kilometer with the 100,000. And so it, the final answer will be 4300 centimeter. 43 centimeter is already in the centimeter. 4340 millimeter. So divide it with the 10, it will be converted into centimeter. So the answer will be 434 centimeter. Four whole one by three, which means 4.333333. And it's meter, you want to convert it into centimeter multiplied with 100. So you will have 4.333333 multiplied 100. So your answer will be 433.333 centimeter. So now look at which is the smallest. The smallest is 433 centimeter. The units are same. Now you can easily compare them. And then you have 43.433.3 centimeter. Then you have 434 centimeter and then you have 4300 zero, zero centimeter. So this will be the first, this will be the second, this will be the third, this will be the fourth. And when you write answer, remember the original, the original measurement you will write, okay? So the first one will be 433 three centimeter. The second one will be four whole one by three meter. The third one will be 4340 four millimeter. And the last one will be 0 0.043 kilometer. So I hope that you will understand that how I have made the, the comparison easier by converting them all into the same unit. Hopefully you have understood that was the question number four and let's go to the next question. Okay. So the next question coming up on your screen is question number, here we have question number five. He says Sandra buys a ba ba bass or was whatever you pronounce it for $40 uh, and sells it for $200. Calculate her percentage profit. You see her cost price is uh, $40. Her sale price is $200. You can easily find out the profit. Profit is sale minus cost. Sale is 200, cost is 40. So the profit will be, I think 160. So if you want to find out the percentage profit, that is profit divided by cost, multiply 100. So easily you can find out, let me show you my answer. I've done this question number, uh, this is question number four, uh, question number five uh, is showing up on your screen. Here we go. So question number five is showing up on your screen. Cost is 40, sale is 200, profit will be 200 minus 40. That will be $160 person profit formula is profit divided by cost, multiply 100, 160 divided by 40, multiply 100. And you can see the zero and zero is canceled. So 16 by four multiply 100. So four and 16 will be canceled. That will be four multiply 100. And the final answer will be 400%. The profit gained here is 400% of the cost price. So that was question number five. Hopefully you have understood. Let's move to the next question. Here we go. Question number five, uh, question number six, sorry. And the question number six has two parts in it. Each part is one mark. Okay. He says there, there, these are the minimum temperatures in degrees centigrade recorded by a weather station each day during one week. So you have different temperatures. All of the temperatures are in negative minus 2.3, minus 4.6, minus 1.2, minus 0 0.7, minus 1.4, minus 2.4, minus 0, minus 3.5. Find the range of these temperatures. The range of the temperature means the maximum temperature minus the minimum temperature. The maximum temperature here is minus 0 0.7 and the minimum temperature is minus 4.6. So from maximum subtract the minimum temperature, 
you will get the range of this, this temperature. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you my work. And here we go. So question number six is showing up, 6A part is showing up on your screen. So I have written here, the range is equal to the maximum temperature minus the minimum temperature, minus 0 0.7 minus minus 4.6, minus minus will become plus. So minus 0 0.7 plus 4.6, so 3.9 degree. So the range of the temperature is 3.9 degree. So in the next question, which is verdict is little tricky, the next part, is easy, but it's, 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 it's burning is tricky. How many of these temperatures are between minus four degrees centigrade and minus two degrees centigrade? So how many of these, how many of these means out of these, how many of these are between minus four degrees centigrade and minus two degrees centigrade? So one mark question, but this wording is such that uh, many will get confused. So the methodology which I have used here to solve it is very simple. Look at here, I have drawn a number line and zero minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. Then I have shown all these temperatures on this number line. You can see this. His question was from minus two to, from minus four to minus two. How many of these temperatures of, uh, are in that range? from minus two to mi minus four to minus two, you can see I have shown here with the number line, minus 3.5, minus three, and minus 2.4, and uh, another temperature. His question was, uh, let me check it again. Uh, how many temperature? Minus 3.5, minus 2.4, and minus 2.3. Out of this list, there are three temperatures which are between uh, minus four and minus two. So there are three readings, three temperatures which are between minus four and minus, uh, minus four and minus two out of the given list. There are three between this range. This wording is little tricky. So try to understand how I have drawn a number line. I've shown all the temperatures which were given on that number line. Then he told us that from minus four to minus two, check how many of these temperatures are present. So there are three, minus 3.5, minus 2.4, minus 2.3. Hopefully you have understood this was the question number six. So we are moving to the next question. The next question is question number uh, seven. It has only one part in it. And it's a two mark question. He says, by writing each number correct to one significant figure, estimate the value of, of the, and the given expression. So it's a two mark question. I, uh, this is 6.044 square. So in one significant figure, I will write it six square. This is 212. So in one significant figure, I will write it only 200. And then you have uh, 0.304. So in one significant, it will be only 0 0.3. And then I will solve it. Uh, let me show you my work. Uh, Okay, so the next part is, okay, question number seven is showing up on your screen. So 6.044 square, I will write it six square, 212, I will write it 200, 0 0.304, I will write it only 0 0.3. So 0 0.3, I will remove its decimal upstairs in the place of decimal, I will put one. And after the decimal, there is one digit, so I will put one zero upstairs after one. So here I have 36 into 10 divided by 203, and you can see that zero and zero cancel. Three and 36, they are canceled with each other. So you are left with 12 divided by 20. So again, cut with two, you will left with the six by 10. And six by 10 means the move the decimal one step to the left. So the final answer will be 0 0.6. So this will be the answer, 0 0.6. This will be the answer, 0 0.6. Hopefully you have understood that's the question number seven. So let's move to the next part, uh, next question, I mean. So here we have question number eight. He says, uh, uh, you can see uh, in the diagram, the time on the clock is 2.30 p.m. So calculate the reflex angle between the two hands of the clock. First of all, try to understand that this whole circle will have 360 degrees. 
This whole circle will have total 360 degrees and the circle has been divided into 12 parts. So 360 divided by 12, so, uh, 12 sorry, 360 divided by 12 and each part is of 30 degree. So now the each portion on that circle is of 30 degree. So I, I want to know how much is the reflex angle between these hairs. This angle here, this angle is the obtuse angle, but the, the question is the reflex angle, which is this angle. So I will count how many portions are there. So here I have one portion, two portion, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 8.5, eight and a half. So I will have uh, eight and a half portions of that circle in the reflex angle. Each portion is of 30 degrees. So 8.5 multiplied 30. So you will get that reflex angle. I've done this on a paper. It's how much mark, it's a two mark question. Question number eight, and it has two marks. There's only one part in the question number eight. So let me show you how I have done this question. So here we go. So question number eight. Okay, here we have the question angle in the, because you know, in the clock, you have made 12 equal portions of a circle. So each portion is 360 divided by 12, 30 degree. And the angle between, so reflex angle here, I have shown with the red arrows, it's showing that I want this angle. So the gaps, you count the gaps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 8.5. So 8.5 gaps. So 8.5 multiplied 30. So it will be 85 divided by 10 multiplied 30, 10 and 30 cancel. So it will be have three. So 85 multiplied three, three fives are 15, one um, and uh, one, uh, sorry, five and one carry. So three eights are 24, 24 plus one, that will be 25. So the reflex angle will be 255 between the hands of the clock. The reflex angle at 230 between the hands of the clock will be 255 degrees. So hopefully you have understood the question number eight and the question and the concept and the procedures, they are clear to you. So let's move to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number nine, and it has two portions each. Let me show you. So the first portion is simplify. Here you have to open up the brackets if they can be added or subtracted to it. And in the second part, let's, let's focus the second part later. First of all, the question number one, this three will multiply with this bracket and this plus two will multiply this bracket and with then we will add subtract whatever is possible. So let me go to the next slide here. Okay, so question number nine, A part. So you see three will multiply this bracket, nine A minus three for the 12. This two will multiply both these members inside the bracket. So it will be four minus two A. So nine A minus two A, that will be seven A minus 12 plus four, that will be minus eight. So very simple question, question number nine, A part. Let's go to the B part. And in the B part, you know, uh, it says given that four X is equal to three Y, find the numerical value of eight X plus Y plus divided by Y. So this question, the B part is not easy. This one mark question is a little difficult. So try to understand uh, how I will do this. And this is question number, Okay, so question number nine, B part. It is given that the 4x plus 3y, uh, 4x is equal to 3y. So 4x divided by y will be equal to 3. So that 4 will go on this. So x divided by y will be equal to 3 by 4. So remember this value, x divided by y equals to 3 by 4. The expression whose value I want to find out is 8x plus y divided by y. By y. So you see here, I will do an unusual thing. That is, I will divide the every term with the y. Every term in the numerator and the denominator, I will divide them with y. So what will happen? You will have eight x divided by y plus y divided by y, and the whole thing divided by, and the, in the denominator, y divided by y. So you will have eight bracket x by y bracket close plus one, divided by y cancelled and you will have one. 
So the value of the x by y that we have already know that is three by four. So x divided by y, I in the place of x divided by y, I will write three by four. So this four and eight will be canceled. You will have two, two, three, the six, six plus one divided by one. So that will be seven by one, that will be seven. So this question number nine, B part market, it's not an easy one mark question. It is little tricky. Question number nine, that was the question number nine, A and B part, hopefully you have understood. Okay, so let's move to the next question. The next question is question number 10. It's a three mark question, only one part we have in here. So what they want is the value of x and y. Here our simultaneous equation is already given to you. 3x minus 2y equals to 12, 4x plus y equals to 5. So the methodology is I will try to make the y same. For that purpose, what I will do, I will multiply the second equation with 2. So I will have 8x plus 2y equals to 10. Now the when the y will be same in both first term and the second and the second equation, sorry, first equation and second equation, I will simply add them. So the y will be canceled and you will be only left with the x in the equation. And this is how you will find the value of the x. Let me show you the walking. It's a very famous question. Simultaneous equation, it always come in the paper and it is a normally of three marks. So it's very important to know the how to solve the simultaneous equation. You see, 3x minus 2y equals to 12, 4x plus y equals to 5. The first one is equation number one. Second one is equation number two. So what to make the denominators of the y same, same. What I will do, I will multiply the second with two and add it into the first. So I will have 3x minus 2y equals to 12. When the 4x plus y equals to 5 will multiply with the 2, the answer will be 8x plus 4, 2y. Sorry, 8x plus 2y equals to 10. So minus 2y plus 2y, they will be canceled. 3x plus 8x, that will be 11x equals to 10 plus 12. That will be 22x will be equals to 22 divided by 11. And the x value will be 2. Uh, put x equals to 2 in the equation number 2. We have 4 bracket. x value is 2 plus y equals to 5. So four into two is eight plus y equals to five. So y will be equals to five minus eight. And the final answer of the y will be minus three. So the value of the x will be two and the value of the y will be minus three. So this is how you will do the question number 10. It's a question on the simultaneous equation and hopefully you have understood. So the next question coming up on your screen is question number 11, and it has three, three, three parts. The first question of the question number 11 is easy. It says, uh, express 340, 0, 0, 000, 340, 000, 340, 000 in the standard form. So it's decimal is at the right side, it was at the end of the right side. So I will move it to the left. So it will become 3.4 multiply. It has to go one, two, three, four, five steps. So 3.4 into 10 is from five, uh, that will be the standard form. So let me show you, I've done this on a paper. Let me show you. Uh, okay. So question number 11, A part, it is showing up. Uh, 340000. So I will move the decimal uh, uh, to make it the standard form. It will become 3.4x for 5 Pascal. 3.4x for 5 Pascal. That is the question number 11, A part. Hopefully you have understood. So that's. Back. So the second part is question number 11, B part. So now we are on the question number 11, express 340000 in the standard form. The decimal of this number is here, here, here. So in the standard form, I will move it uh, to the to the left one, two, three, four, and five. 
I, I will move it uh, five steps to the left. So the number becomes less than 10 and more than one. Very important rule, the number should become less than one and more than, uh, sorry, more than one and less than 10. So it will become 3.4. So then I will, because I moved it five steps to the uh, left, so the power will become uh, positive five. Let me show you how I have done. So this is how the question number 11, a part is done. See, uh, this was the decimal was here. So I moved one, two, three, four, five. So I will write into 10 raised to power five, 3.4 into 10 power five. This number here, this is the rule. This number should be more than one and less than 10. This number here should be more than one and less than 10. How This is how we convert them to the standard form. So this is how you do the question number 11. The question of 11 B part, uh, we have four into 10 to 7 divided by eight into 10 to 21. And uh, so I will take 110 uh, from upstairs and I will give it to four. That will become 40 multiplied 10 to 6 divided by eight and to 10 to 21, eight and 40 will be canceled. You get five into 10 to the powers, uh, 10 to 6 minus 21. So, you will have the final answer will be five into 10 power minus 15, it's in the standard form. Because you can see this five, this five is more than one and less than 10. So it's in the standard form. So it's five X pro minus 15. So the question of 11 C part, this expression is given. And what I will do, you see, this is seven into 10 to the power A minus three into 10 to the power A minus one. 10 to the power a minus one means 10 to the power a multiplied 10 to the power minus one. So in the second step, this is the only thing which I have done. Is equals to k into 10 to the power a, k value we want to find out. So I will take 10 to the power a common from these two terms. So from here, I will have seven into three into 10 to the power minus one. 10 to the power minus one means three divided by 10. Uh, three multiplied 10 to the power minus one means three divided by 10. So I will take the LCM, so LCM will be 10, and it will become 70 um, minus three. And so you will have 70 minus three divided by 10 equals to K multiplied 10 power A, 70 minus three, 67 divided by 10, 67 divided by 10 is 6.7. And then you will have 6.7 into 10 power A equals to K into 10 power A. So when you compare them, they are equal. So 10 power A, 10 power A, they are to be canceled. So K value will be 6.7. The value of the K will be 6.7. The value of the K will be 6.7. Hopefully you have understood. So this was the question number 11, A part, B part, and C part. This C part is, uh, uh, is tricky. Kindly put a star with it. And whenever you, once you are done with this paper, after two, three days, review this question, okay? Always mark on your paper the questions which needed to be reviewed. Okay, so let me show you. This was the question number 11. And this was the A part. We are done with this. Then this is the B part. It was a two mark question. We are done with this. And this was the C part where you have to find out the value of the K. It was a one mark question. And this C part is not an easy one. Okay, so we are moving to the next question. The question number 12 is coming up on your screen. Here we have in the question number 12, we have, I think two parts, yeah. A and B part. He says in the A part, he says simplify bracket two X square bracket close raised to power three. One mark question. And the B part is also showing up on the screen. So what we will do, and uh, so see a very simple question. Let me show you how I have done this question. This is question number 11. Okay, so here we have question number 12, A part, uh, bracket two X square, bracket close raised to power three, this raised to power three, power is for two and it is also for X squared. So I gave both of them this power, two raised to power three means two multiplied two multiplied two, that's eight X square raised to power three power of the power multiplies with each other. That's the rule, power of the power multiplies with each other. 
So x raised to power two multiplied three, that will be six. So the final answer will be eight x raised to power six. Hopefully you have understood. So in the B part, he says six t cube divided by a bracket two t squared divided by three. So when I will convert this divide sign, this divide sign, when I will convert this divide sign into multiplication sign, the fraction after the divide sign that will flip, that will reciprocate. So three divided by two t square. So you will have two t square and a t cube. They will be canceled with each other. So, and two and six will be canceled. You are left with three t multiplied three. So the final answer will be nine t. This is question number 12. Hopefully you have understood this. So let's go to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number 13. It's A part. A part you see here, uh, oh, set B is given. It's one, its members are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And Q, its members are one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11. He says, find how many members are in the B union Q. He wants you to find out how many members are in the P union Q. P union Q means that you uh, take P and Q, you write all of them in a set. And when you write all of them, uh, the only thing which we keep in mind is we do not repeat any member. So let me show you how I've done this. And this is a very simple question. Uh, okay, so... First of all, I will find out the B union Q. I will um, and I will write both the members, of, uh, all the members of both the sets, but I will not repeat them. One comma two comma three comma four comma five comma six comma seven comma eight comma nine comma eleven. So that's the B union Q. But the main question is how many members are there? This small n means how many members are in the set B union Q? It's Q. So simply count how one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten members. So the answer is ten. This is how you will do question number thirteen, eight part. Let's move to the next part. Okay, so the next part is of three marks coming up on your screen. He says uh, P belongs to A intersection B, where A and B are overlapping. The P should come there. The Q belongs to A union B whole complement. A union B means A and B both, and complement means out of them. So A and B both and out of them. So the Q will be outside the circle A and B. It will not be inside the circles. R is A intersection B complement. B complement means out of the B, out of the B, the area which is common with the A, and that will be this portion, this portion. Out of the B, B complement means out of B. Intersection A means a common portion with A. Out of the B, the common portion with the A, that is this portion. So R should come here. So three mark question, very important. On the Venn diagram below, write each of the letter P, Q, and R in its appropriate subset. So let me show you, I have done this and come. Okay, so here you can see the, the P will be where the A and B is overlapping. The R will be A, uh, the Q will be A union B complement, whole complement, which means A and B both and out of them. That means A and B both, and you have to go out of them. So the Q will be written here out of the both circles. R is out of the B common with A, that is here. So. This is how you do it. So I hope that you have understood that where we have put those members in the correct subsets. It's a three mark question, important question. Okay, so let's move to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is uh, question number uh, question number 14. Okay, we can. Okay, so let me reduce the size a little bit so you can see the whole question. This is question number 14. He says, this net is folded to make a triangular prism. Which vertices join with the uh, A? So if you want to make it, uh, you must have seen whenever you go, for example, you buy uh, sweets from gourmet or from, from any bakery. 
they have uh, these, uh, these these boxes and these boxes are flat and they and what they, the the the, the, the sail pan he folds them he folds them and a box is formed you must have seen this whenever in pakistan we go to buy sweets we must have witnessed this and they they take a flat they have a flat uh, uh, box and it's, it's flat and what they do this and this and a box is formed so that is called the net of a box so it's a triangular prism so what i will do this will go come up this thing uh, uh, along this it will be folded fh this will come here this will come here this h will come here and join with the h this k will join with the h and this a will join with the g this b will and the e will folded and it will come here and this d this will be like a triangular prism it will be like a triangular prism so it a 3d figure will be formed so hopefully you understand. So the this net is folded to make a triangular prism, which works is joined with A. So try to understand. So uh, when I will fold this, this will go up. This will also come up. This K will come and touch with the H. So this A will be touching with the G. And from here, when this will be folded and come like this, so E. So A vertex will be in contact with the G and the E. So you have to use your imagination also. So when I will make a triangular prism with these folds and uh, A will be in contact with the G and E. The next question is which edge joins B to You see D, E, D, E. So when I will fold the, the it's like this, when the D, E will come like this, D, E will be in touch with the B, A, B, A. Okay, so the next question is, uh, he says, the FH value is two centimeter, GH value is two centimeter, and the GH value is five centimeter. Find the volume of the triangular prism. If you want to find out the volume of a prism, the methodology is very simple. You find out the volume and the area of the base. This base will be this triangle. This triangle will be its base. You just find its area. And you multiply it with the height of the prism. Height of the prism means the distance between the bases of that prism. So let me show you. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you my work and try to understand this. This is one question which is uh, which makes uh, difficulty for my students. The students who are working face to face with me, they they have a little difficulty in this question. So A will be question number 14, A part. A will be joined with the G and E. Question number 14, B part, uh, the D, E, when you fold it, make a box out of it. Then the D, E will be in touch with the B, A, H. And when you want to find out the volume, and he gave you some dimensions, the dimension he gave us, I have written here. And you can see this triangle. This will be the base of the prism. So area of the base will be one by two base into height. So it will be one by two to two into two to two cancel. So the base area is two. Volume of the prism, prism is base area multiply height of the prism. And remember, the height of the prism means that the distance between one base and the other base. Because in the prism, you have base. Base is that face which has an exact face on the other side. So that face is known as the base here. The triangle will be that base. And the distance between both the triangles on the two sides, that will be the height of the prism. And that is five centimeters. So base area is two, the height of the prism is five. Something multiplied them, you get 10 centimeters cube. So the volume, so the volume of this prism will be 10 centimeter cube. So this is question number 14. Hopefully you have understood. So let's move to the next question. The next question will be question number 13 coming up on your screen. It's, uh, it's about the, it is about the probability two bags contain the beads. The first bag contains seven beads of which three are red and four are white. The second bag contains five beads of which two are red and three are blue. One bead is taken at random from each bag 
the tr tree diagram is shown below. You see the, the bags are different. They have different colors, beads in them. So their outcomes do not depend upon each other. Whatever will be coming out of the first bag, it do not have any effect on the probability of the, of the balls which are coming out of the second bag. The tree is already there. The probabilities are already written there. You have to write out the, for our own convenience. This is how we work on these, uh, these probability questions. We always, before going into the questions, we always write the outcomes. For example, here, the first outcome will be red, comma, red. The second outcome will be the red, comma, blue. The third outcome will be the white, comma, red. And the fourth outcome will be white, comma, blue. So the outcomes probability, I will find out by multiplying the probabilities on these arrows. For example, red, comma, red, its probability will be three by seven multiplied two by five. For example, red, comma, blue, its probability will be three by seven multiplied three by five. For example, white, comma, red, its probability will be four by seven multiplied two by five. White, comma, blue, its probability will be four by seven multiplied three by five. So you complete your tree diagram. He has not asked you to complete the tree diagram. He's directly asking you a question, but this is our trick that uh, we always complete the, the tree diagram and then we go to the questions. The first, uh, let me show you the questions. Uh, he says, find uh, both uh, beads are red. We have to find out the probability of red, comma, red. Both beads are white. We have to find out the probability of white, comma, white. And the C part is exactly one bead. And it means exactly one bead should be red, only, not two beads, only one read. You will take those options in which you have exactly one bead red. So let me show you a one mark, one mark, two mark question. Uh, this, this, this is the question. Let me show you. I've done this on the paper. So from there, you easily, you can understand this question. So this was question 14. Now we are on question 15. Here you can see that I have written the outcomes, red, comma, red, red, comma, blue, white, comma, red, white, comma, blue. So the probabilities are by I, how I get these probabilities of each event. I multiply the, the probabilities given on their arrows. So you will have six by 35, you will have nine by 35, then you will have eight by 35, and then you have 12 by 35. So the first question was, what's the probability of getting the red comma red? So that is red comma red here. You can see red comma red is probability six by 35. The second question is, what's the probability of getting a white comma white? The probability of getting white comma white, you can look at, look at this outcome of this experiment. Um, white comma white is not present there. So it means this probability is zero because in the second bag, there was no white. So the, the probability of getting a white comma white uh, option is zero. Then we have exactly one red ball. So that is only possible when you have the red comma blue plus the white comma, sorry, red comma blue plus the white comma red. Uh, out of the four given options, there are two times happen, this happened. So the red comma blue, its probability is nine by 35 multiply. White comma red, its probability is eight divided by 35. I will add them. So this will be uh, 17 divided by 35. This is how you will do this question of the probability. Hopefully you have understood. So have a good look over it. The technique with which we work, that's important. That makes our question easy. Uh, okay. okay, so we are moving to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number, okay. Question number 16 is size. I have to keep uh, smaller size. So you can, look, you can have a good look at the whole question. That's question number 16. Only this is the question first. He says the heights of a sample of a plant over my year, the results are shown in the table and in the histogram. Heights are given from five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 25, 25 to 40. And the frequencies are also given 15, 25, P and 30. So then they have shown us a uh, frequency density and height histogram. And the first question is use the histogram to find the value of the PP is the frequency and class is from 15 to 25. 15 to 25 is this class. If you want to find out the frequency of this class, the methodology is very simple. Simply area of this uh, rectangle 
area of this bar, area of this rectangle on the frequency density histogram is equal to the frequency. You see the length here is uh, 10 and the height here is four, simply multiply them. You will get the frequency of that class, which is P here. So 10 multiply four, that will be 50. So the, the P value, sorry, 10 multiply four, that will be 40. Sorry, I said 50, it's 40. So the P value will be 40. The value of the P will be 40. And then he says, complete the histogram. And the last class is histogram is not shown here. You remember the formula for the frequency density is the frequency of that class divided by the class width. Remember this formula, frequency density is equals to frequency of that class divided by the class width. So the frequency of the last class is 30 and the class width will be 40 minus 25 and that will be something like 15. So frequency divided by class width, that will be 30 divided by 15, that will be two. So I will draw a histogram here uh, from 25 to 40 and frequency density is uh, two. So I will draw like this two. Into. Let me show you. Okay. So I hope you understand. Let me show you. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you. So here we go. Here we go. Okay. So here you can see that uh, I have done. I saw this. Uh, the first part was uh, the value of the B. E. The value of the B will be the length and the width of this class. This histogram that will be four multiplied ten, and that will be forty. And the in the in, in here, in the next question, I will have to find out the frequency density. The frequency density will be frequency divided by the class width. The frequency is thirty. The class width is fifteen. Forty minus twenty-five that give you fifteen. So thirty divided by fifteen that will be two. So here you can see I have drawn that uh, that bar for the for the histogram of the last class from 25 to 40. The frequency density is two, the blue color histogram. So that so you can see that the, the histogram of this whole table is completed. So this is question number 16. Hopefully it's clear to you that how I have found the unknown frequency P and how I have drawn the histogram for the last class. That's question number 16. And don't forget the formula frequency density is equals to frequency of the class divided by the class width. So let's move to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is this question. He says the diagram. The diagram shows the. Uh, let me show. I'm not able to see my. Okay. So here we go. The diagram shows the positions of three boards A. E and C, this diagram is already given to us, A, B, C, and this check what's the question he is telling us, the question he is putting to us. He says, by the measurement, find the bearing of B from A. By measurement, find the bearing of B from A. B from A. B from A means on the A, you should have the north, and from that north move clockwise, move clockwise, move clockwise and come to AB line. From the north on the A, move clockwise and come to the AB line and check what's the angle. This angle will be reflex angle that will be more than 270 degree. And if I want to measure it directly with the help of the compass, because he used the word measure it, he used the word measure it. So with the uh, protector, I will measure it, but with the protector, I can only measure up to 180 degree. So the simple method will be, I will, the trick will be, I will measure this angle and I want actually this outside angle. So I will measure this angle with the help of the protector and then I will subtract this angle from 360 and I will get the bearing of B from A. So let me show you, I've done this on a paper. So here we go. So, let me show you. So uh, I measured this angle with the help of the protector. These are the two arms of that angle. You would put a protector here. The cross here should be on the A and the zero should be here. And from here, I counted till this arm and that was 32 degree. 
and but this is not the bearing of the b from a the bearing of the b from a is this blue color angle outside which i have marked so 360 minus 32 that will give you the bearing that is 328 so the bearing of b from a is 328 degrees hopefully you have understood this a part let's move to the next part next part is try to understand this wording she says the cx is the bisector of the angle acp cx is the this angle this is cx this is the angle bisector so you remember the angle bisector means the if you move on this you will be equidistant from the cb and the ca line when you draw on a bisector of the bca angle it means when you move if you move on the on this line you will be always equidistant from the cb and the ca line both okay. so what's this question he says using the compass and the and the straight edge only let me do the sides now you can see the whole thing using the he says using the compass and the straight edge only straight edge means a scale a ruler using the compass and the straight edge only construct the locus and the of, of the points inside the triangle a b c you have to remain inside the triangle that are equidistant from b and c whenever he says equidistant from b and c Yeah, equidistant from two points. So what we do, we draw a perpendicular bisector uh, of the line which joins those two points. Equidistant from B and C, uh, we will draw a perpendicular bisector of the line BC. Okay. So how I will draw the perpendicular bisector of the line BC? Let me show you first this part, and then we will try to understand because here the full diagram is already drawn. so he wants you to draw a perpendicular bisector of the bc so this is the point b this is the point c you take the your you, you take your protector or oh, uh, put the, the the pin of the protector here technically we say taking b as the center open the protector more than half this bc line open the protector more than half of the bc line so the pin of the protector is here mark uh, arc here and mark the arc on this side so on both the sides of the bc line uh, by taking b as the center of the arc i have marked uh, two arcs then i will put the pin of the compass here i will take c as the center compass should be open same more than half of this line cp don't change the compass now then i will draw an arc on this side and i will draw an arc of this side so where these two arcs cut here and this point i join them with this dotted line you can see if you move on this dotted line this is the perpendicular bisector of the bc line so if you move on this line you will be always equidistant from b and c point so hopefully you understand that how i have drawn this bc and b and c equidistant from them it's a perpendicular bisector i think you understood that uh, how i have drawn the perpendicular bisector then look at the question he gave you some conditions he says uh, a ship a ship is near near nearer to ac than to bc the angle bisector uh, which was uh, cx you have to remain near the east ac you have to remain remain near ac and nearer to c than to b so uh, so the 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 perpendicular bisector you draw of the bc line you have to remain near the c so share the region in which the ship is situated so let me show you i have done this i shared this he says remain near ac so i will have to this is the angle bisector so i will have to remain near ac line okay this is the perpendicular bisector between b and c he said you have to remain near the c so this is the portion which will be shaded he said near to c yeah so nearer to c than b so this is the portion which will be shaded let me increase the size so this is the portion which is inside the triangle abc this is the portion which is nearer to ac as compared to bc this is the portion which is the nearer to c as compared to b so this is the shape do hopefully you have understood this question that was question number 17 let's move to the next question 
So next question coming up on your screen on your screen is uh okay, so let's go to the next question. Okay. Okay, so here we have uh let me show you first. So it's uh, the diagram is the distance time graph of Safira's journey from home to a shop and back again. She leaves home at 8.15. She is leaving home at 8.15. Okay, so don't forget these numbers. 8.15, she started walking from her home. And how many minutes does she stay in the shop? So, and here she is in the shop and when the distance time graph becomes flat, it means she has stopped. And if you look at here carefully, at 8.30, she was in the shop till 8.35, she is in the shop. And then she started coming back to home. And so how many minutes she has stayed in the shop? Just five minutes. She has stayed in the shop for five, for five minutes only. From 8.30 till 8.35, the graph is that, which means she is stationary. She is at rest. So she is in the shop for only five minutes. The next question is, he says, uh, at 8.30, her brother leaves Her brother leaves home and goes to the shop. He walks at the same speed as Safira. So at 8.30, the brother also started from home to her shop, and he's moving at the same speed as of the Safira. It's a distance time graph, and the speed is actually the slope of this graph. So this, whatever is the slope of the Safira's graph, same will be the slope of her brother's graph. So on the grid, draw the graph of his journey to the shop. Let me show you my work. I've done this. It's very important to understand that how I will draw a line, which is exactly the same. Okay, so this is the, this is the graph of Safira. So you can see it has one run and one rise, one run, 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 one rise. One rise. So his brother started at 8.30 because his brother has to stay, has the same, uh, same speed. So his graph, I'm showing with the red, that should have the same uh, gradient. His graph should be parallel to the Safira's graph. So I will, I, I will, how I will draw this graph, I started at 8.30. One run, one rise, 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 one run, one rise. So then I joined these points and you can see they are exactly parallel to each other because it's a distance time graph. So here the slope is equal to the speed and this told us that the speed of the Safira and the speed of her brother, they are exactly same. So that's why the distance time graphs, they are parallel to each other. So this red color graph is her brother's graph when he started from home and is going towards the shop. So that is the B part, uh, first part, B first part of that question. Uh, B first part is at, at the, her brother leaves home and goes to the shop. He walks at the same speed as Safira. First part is on the grid, draw the graph of his journey to the shop. One mark question, we have done this. How far is he from the shop when he meets Safira, when he met Safira? You have to check how much is the distance from the shop when he met Safira, you have to tell how much is the distance from the shop. So let me increase the size of here. Here they have met each other. Safira and her brother here, they met each other. And you have to tell how much is the distance from the shop. The shop is here. This is at 1200 and he's at 800. So the distance between the shop and him is 1200 minus 800. That will be 400. 1200 minus 800, that will be 400. So the distance between the here, you can see 1200 minus 800, that be 400 meter. And question number 18, A plus A part, that's 12 minutes. What? I wrote here 10 minutes, that's wrong. Let me, let me correct it. Let me correct it, let me correct it. Uh, by mistake in the paperwork, I have written there 10 minutes. The answer is not 10 minutes. So let me correct that. I can correct it, just I need one minute. So let me open it in the pane. I'm sorry, I just wrote there by mistake. I wrote there 10 minutes. It's actually, how many minutes? 10.30 to 10.35, so it's only five minutes. So let me enter. So 
So I write five. So let me take. So five minutes. Okay. So by mistake, I, I wrote there uh, 10 minutes. So let me bring it back, paste it there. Sorry, I just made a mistake. I always check that um, versus five minutes. So let me check the question again, because I don't want to make any mistake. Uh, I have checked them with the, let me check with the question. He said, how many minutes does she stay in the shop? She can see from 8.30 to 8.35, she was in the shop, so that's five minutes. Okay, so it's good now, so let's, uh, Okay, the C part is question number 10, C part in the next question, he asked the C part, what is just calculate the speed of Safira walks to the shop, calculate the speed Safira walks to the shop, give your answer in kilometer per hour. Okay, let me show you how I've done this work. Okay, so here you can see how I will find the speed. And uh, this this is a distance time graph, and you can find easily the speed. Um, she is moving uh, with a constant gradient here, so her speed is constant throughout the journey when she was going to the shop. So I will find out this rise, and I will find out this run from eight fifteen to eight thirty. So this run is of fifteen minutes. And this uh, run is 15 minutes, but I want the answer in the kilometer per hour. So I will convert the 15 minutes into hours. That will be uh, 0.25 hours. And I have this, uh, uh, how much is the rise? That is 1200 meter, but convert it into the kilometers. It will be 1.2 kilometers. So how you convert the meters into kilometers, you divide it with the 1000. So 1,200 meters divided by 1,000, that will be 1.2 kilometers. You can remove the decimals and 1.2 divided by 0 0.25 because the calculator is not allowed. So you can remove the decimals. You will have 12 multiply 100 divided by 25 multiply 10. So when you remove the decimals of the numerator and denominator. So the final answer will be 4.8 kilometer per hour. I hope you will be able to do this calculation. So there was one mistake which I just made. I have cleared it five minutes. By mistake, I wrote 10 minutes. So now this question is good. Hopefully you have understood this question. So that was the question number 18. Now we are moving to the next question. Next question number 19. Let me reduce the size. So you can understand the question. This question number 19 coming up on your screen. He says, uh, okay, so question number 19. If A first part, he says, Triangle A and triangle B and the point two uh, B, which is minus two comma two, are drawn on the grid. Describe fully the single transformation that may maps triangle A onto triangle B. So triangle A onto triangle B, we have to, you see here that this is the object, this is the image, you can see it has been flipped. The, 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 the figure has, for example, the figure was like this, and now the okay, so like this. Now it's like this. Let me show you. Ah, uh, yeah. Here I have. Uh, let me show you so that because the, the image has been because I'm using the front camera. So uh, let me show you. I uh, let me change my camera, and then you will be able to see it. 
let me change the i have i'm trying to change the camera okay the camera should be changed okay so here you can see this you can see the figure is like this now how you will know that this is not the rotation it is basically so the figure a is like this the figure a is like this if i will rotate it some people confuse it you see if the a figure has been rotated oh it will not match with the the b if you rotate it it do not match with the b it do not match with the b so it's definitely not rotation it's reflection actually in the reflection the body will flip okay in the reflection you see if this this is the shape a and when it will flip now you can see it's exactly matching with the b let me increase the size so you can see you can understand that how i am i know that this is 100% reflection okay so let me show you this so here you have the a this is the figure a and this has uh, this is figure a you can see figure a and now it has flipped oh this matches with the figure b it means that the a has been reflected in the into the b so it's reflection so it's basically reflection when i when i i definitely know that it's reflection when i know that this is reflection i can easily uh, describe the reflection also uh, the methodology is very simple what i need to do you see the method how to find if it's reflection then i need to know the line of reflection the method is very simple try to understand if you know the locus and you know a little bit geometry join the same same point with it for example i join this point and this point these are the two same points this point and this point join them and draw a perpendicular bisector of them so that perpendicular bisector will be the line of reflection when you join this point and this point and you draw the perpendicular bisector that will be this line and this is the x axis is y and is y equals to 0 so this is a reflection in the line y equals to 0 or in other words you can say it's a reflection in the x axis so this is a two mark question this is how you will how you will describe this fully the next question is write down the matrix that represents this transformation write down the matrix that represents this transformation you see <clears throat> here i know it's a two mark question try to understand very important concept now. this point and this a figure is reflected and the image is b now i want the transformation matrix some people remember some people remember the transformation matrix for example you can memorize uh, the transformation matrix which uh, which is used to transfer in a, to reflect the body in the x axis you can remember this uh, number also the matrix also but another way of doing is i don't remember them i i know if i know the object and i know the image i can easily find out the transformation matrix for the reflection very easily so take the same points on both the figures same same points object and image for example this point this is 2 comma 2 that's the object its image will be 2 comma minus 2 let me take this point that's 4 comma 6 comma 2 sorry and its image will be 6 comma minus 2 so this is how you will do this and let me go to the let me go to the my work and here we go so i have taken two points and let me show you how i will i will do this so we are on question number 19 b part and very important trick which we want to learn is um uh, that how to find out the transformation matrix the formula is transformation matrix multiply the object is equals to the image i will take two points from the uh, from the object 
I will note down their coordinates and the same points I will take their Im their images, coordinates of their images. So I have taken two comma two in the object here. You can see two comma two, two comma two. That uh, its image will be two comma minus two. And from the object, I have taken six comma two, and its image is six comma minus two. So I will take this matrix to the other side. When this will go to the other side, it it will become inverse of this matrix. So I hope that you understand that how to find the inverse in the rough work I have shown here. So uh, first of all, I will need to find out the inverse uh, terminant. So these two will be multiplied to multiply two. That will be four. These two will multiply with each other. That's twelve. And I have to write in negative between them. I hope you understand how to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. So minus eight is the determinant. Then I will find the adjoint of this matrix. So their their location will be changed. This two will go this. The two will come here. And these two on this diagonal, I will change the sign simply minus two and minus eight. So inverse will be one by minus eight into the adjoint. That's two minus eight minus two two. So First of all, I will write this because it's on the second location on the left side. So it's inverse should also be written on the second position on the right side. So this is that joint. I've read taken minus one by eight on the first position. The reason is I am not bringing in the minus one by eight because it makes the calculation complicated. So I will bring this in at the end. So multiply these two matrices. I will take from the first matrix, I will take the rows. And from the second matrix, I will take the columns. So two multiply two, that will be four minus six multiply minus two, uh, sorry, two multiply two, that will be four and plus six multiply minus two, that will be minus 12. So four minus 12, that will be minus eight. Then this first row will multiply with the second column here. The two will multiply with the minus eight, that will be minus 12 plus six multiply two, that will be plus 12 minus 12 plus 12, that will be zero. So you can, here I have skipped the uh, steps. Then the second row will start multiplying. The second row will multiply with this first column. First member multiplies with the first member. Second member multiply with the second member. Minus two multiply with two, it will be minus four. Plus minus two multiply minus two, it will be plus four. So minus four plus four, that will be zero. So you can see here. Then this second row will multiply with the second column. Minus two will multiply with the minus six will be plus 12. Minus two multiply with the two, that will be minus four. So 12 minus four, that will be positive eight. So now this one by eight, which is outside negative one by eight, which will come inside, it will divide with all these four members. So minus eight divided by minus eight, that will be plus one. Zero divided by minus eight, that will be zero. Zero divided by minus eight, that will be zero. And eight divided by minus eight, the minus one will be the answer. So this is the transformation which, re which represents the reflection in the x-axis. Or this is the matrix which represents the reflection in the line y equals to zero. A lot of people can memorize it. The list is given in your book of these matrices. You can memorize it. But our technique is if I know the object and I know the image, so by using two points of the object and corresponding points in the image, I can use this technique and I can find out the transformation matrix. Very simple, but if it's new for you, please practice it and you will master this concept. So that was the question number 19. Uh, let's move to the next question. Uh, he says triangle A is mapped onto triangle C by, in, uh, by an enlargement center P, scale factor minus one by two. On the grid, draw the label, label triangle C. So the center of enlargement is P and the scale factor is minus one by two. We have to draw this figure. I have done this already. Let me show you my work. So here you can see the methodology is very simple. The A is three vertices. I will join them with the uh, in center of enlargement and I will, I will prolong these lines. You see with the blue lines, I have joined the points, the vertices of the object with the center of enlargement and I have prolonged them. I represented with the blue lines. Then what I will do, I will take a scale and I will measure this distance. With the help of the scale, I will measure the point, the distance of this uh, vertex from the center of enlargement. I will measure it with the scale. 
and I whatever will be the measurement, I will multiply it with the one by two. The scale factor is minus one by two, basically. So whatever will be the answer from the center of enlargement, I will go on the opposite side because the scale factor is negative. Now the uh, the image will be on the opposite side of the of the object. So from the center of enlargement, I will measure that distance, which I got by multiplying the distance of the object. From the center of enlargement, I will multiply it with one by two, whatever that distance is. I will start on the same line from the center of enlargement. I will mark the vertex of the of image. Then I will measure this distance. Look at here, one, two, three, four. This point is four squares on the, on the right side. So multiplied with, with the one by two become two. So on the opposite side, on the same line, same blue line, I will go two squares and put a dot here. Then I will check this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is distance, this vertex is distance is eight. I will multiply it with one by two. Then I will get four from here on the same blue line on the opposite side where the object is. I will go four, one, two, three, four, put a dot. Then I join these dots, a triangle will be formed and I will put a C in it. So this is the triangle C. This is how you do the enlargement. The scale factor is negative. When the scale factor is negative, the object and the image, they are on the opposite sides or to the, to the center of enlargement. They are on the opposite sides of the center of enlargement because the scale factor is negative. Hopefully you understand that how I have drawn the figure C. So that was the question number 19. Now let's move to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen, question number 20, he says the diagram shows the sequence of patterns. Each pattern has one more row and two more dots in each row than the pattern before it. So first pattern, you can see there are two rows. In the second pattern, you have three rows. In the third uh, pattern, you have four rows. And in the fourth pattern, I will have five rows. In the first pattern, there was one member in the row. In the second pattern, there were three members in the row. In the third pattern, there were five members in the row. And in the fourth pattern, there will be seven members in the row. Each pattern has one more row and two more dots in each row than the pattern before. We try to understand this sentence, very simple. On the diagram, draw the pattern number four. Let me show you, I have, I have drawn this already. So question number, 20 part A, let me show you. This is question number 20 part A. So here you can see I have drawn the pattern number four and you can see the number of rows in the pattern number four are five and the number of members in each row, there are seven members. So this is the question number 20 A part, I hope you understand. So let's move to the next part. What the next part says, complete the table for the first uh, four patterns in this sequence. So here have a number of rows and number of dots in each row and the total number of dots. So number of rows, first figure two, the number of rows in the second figure is three, the number of rows in the third figure is four, the number of rows in the fourth figure is five. And uh, the number of dots in the first figure, one dot, and the number of dots in each row is in the second figure, there are three. In the third figure, there are five. In the fourth figure, there will be seven. The total number of dots you get by multiplying these two. The number of rows with the number of, the number of rows with the number of dots in each row. You multiply them, you get the total dots. So two multiply one is two, three multiply three is nine, four multiply five will be 20. So five multiply seven will be 35. Let me show you, I have completed this table. And that table is coming up on the screen. Hopefully you understand that how I have completed this a simple pattern, it's a simple pattern, a simple pattern. Just have to catch the pattern. Hopefully you have understood that how, how I have completed this table. And let's show you the, how the next part is done. <clears throat> it says the next part is, Find an expression in terms of N for P, for Q, 
and for total number of dots in in the pattern so one one and one month so this is the this is the question i will be working on so let me show you how i have done this it's a very simple question so the number of rows the pattern is two three four five this was the pattern if you check every next term is you are getting by adding one if you have this kind of sequence two three four uh, that means one is added a constant number is being added to get the next term we call it the arithmetic sequence it's n term you can easily find out the formula is a plus d bracket n minus one where a means the first term d means the common difference which you are adding and n remains n so a will be two d will be one so two plus one bracket n minus one so it will be two plus n minus one so n plus one so p is n plus one Question number uh, B is third part. The pattern of the number of dots is one, three, five, seven. So in this pattern, you can see each next term you are getting by adding two. So uh, it's an arithmetic sequence. The nth term you can easily find out by using the formula A plus D bracket N minus one. The A value means the first term in the sequence. D means the common difference and which you add to get the next term or you subtract to get the next term so a plus d bracket n minus one a is one d is two one plus two bracket n minus one so you will have one plus two n minus two so two n minus one so the q value will be two n minus one q value will be two n minus one the b fourth part he says find the total dots total dots you can find out by number of rows multiply with the number of dots in each row. So it means P multiply Q, the P value you have in terms of N and plus one, and the Q value you have, that is two N minus one, you multiply them. And the final answer will be two N square plus N minus one. So you just simply multiply these two brackets with each other. And I hope you can do that. So the answer will be two N square minus N plus two N minus one, the two N square plus N minus one. Hopefully you have understood it's a little tricky question, but you have to catch the pattern. So that was the question number 20 right now on your screen. So let's move to the next part. So here we have question number 21 is on your screen. It's uh, there's two parts, okay. So try to understand this question. Here we have, uh, um, a, B, C, the vertices are given. A is coordinates are one comma two, B coordinates are 13 comma two, C coordinates are four comma eight. A, B line is a horizontal line. And you know horizontal lines, their way and can be simple, Y equals to a number. The diagram shows a triangle formed by joining the point A, one comma two, B, 13 comma two, and C, four comma eight. The equation of the line B, C. The equation of this line B, C is given. Its equation is 2x plus 3y equals to 32. The region inside the triangle ABC is defined by the three inequalities. One of these is 2x plus 3y less than 32 because this area is below that line BC. So that's why the crocodile's back is towards y. This question is write down, write down uh, the other inequalities. It says write down the other two inequalities. I means I need to find out the equation of the AC and the equation of the AB, and then I will write the inequalities also. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you this is question number 21. Oh. So question number 21, if you want to find out the equation of the line AC, just note down the two points on that line. A coordinates are one comma two, C coordinates are four comma eight. First of all, I will find the slope or the gradient or uh, the of the AC line that will be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. It will be 8 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 1. That will be 6 divided by 3. That will be 2. So the slope of the AC is 2. I the, then I will find the equation of the AC. The formula is y minus y1 equals to m bracket x minus x1. X1, y1 is one of the points, and m is the slope. I will take the first point. So y1 value is two, x1 value is one, x and y value, you do not touch x and y. The m value is two. So you will have y minus two equals to two bracket x minus one. 
y minus 2 equals to 2x minus 2. So y is equals to minus 2 and minus 2 cancel. So y is equals to 2x. Because uh, in the diagram, the shaded area is below the AC line. So I will write here the crocodile and crocodile's back will be towards y. Because the shaded area is below the AC line. So and the crocodile's back should be towards y in the equation of the AC line when I write the inequality. Hopefully you have understood that how I decided on the AC, the side AC. Then we have the side A, B, A, A coordinates 1 comma 2, B coordinates 13 comma 2. You see these two points, their Y coordinate has not changed. It's a horizontal line. In the horizontal line, the equation is simple Y equals to 2. Horizontal lines, the equation is Y equals to constant. So here Y equals to 2. Because the shaded area is above this line. Because the shaded area is above this line. So the crocodile's mouth will be towards Y. So I will write Y more than two. So these are the two inequalities which, which were missing there. So that's the question number 21A part. And let's let's check what, first of all, what's the question number 21 and this next part. And the next part is, the point of k comma seven, where k is an integer, lies inside the triangle ABC. This point k comma seven, where k values in an integer, is an integer, lies inside the triangle ABC. Find the possible values of the k. Find the possible values of the k. So point is here somewhere. Its y value is seven. The y value is already given. The x value uh, we have to decide. So you see, I will I will check this. I will put this point in this inequality AC, and I will put this point k comma seven in this inequality BC. BC the BC inequality is given here. Yeah, this uh, here is the BC inequality. Yeah, this. and I will find out the k values which are integer, so which are inside this. The methodology is very simple. I'm going to use this AC inequality and the BC inequality. So this is how I will do this. Try to understand the technique. The Y value is already given the K, which is X actually. So the AC inequality says Y is less than 2S. So put that form, seven form, K comma seven in this inequality. So you will have seven less than two K. The two will come on the other side, will divide seven divided by two less than k, so 3.5 less than k, so it means k's value is more than 3.5. And then I will check with the BC inequality, that was 2x plus 3 by less than 32. Put the value of x as k and the y as 7 in that inequality. So 2k plus 3 into 7, less than 32. So 2k, and that's 21, 3 into 7, 21, that take them to the other side. So you will have 2k less than 32 minus 21. So 2k less than 11. So 2k less than 11 by 2. So k is less than 5.5. So the k value should be more than 3.5 and less than 5.5. So more than 3.5 will be 4 and 5 because you have to remain less than 5.5. So the integer will be 4 and 5. So the k values can be 4 and 5. So this is the answer. This part is the tricky one. This last part, question number 21, B part. It's tricky, put a star on this question. It's not easy. Okay, so this was the question number 21 uh, B part. So we are done with the question number 21. So we are moving to the next question. That is question number, the next question is coming up on your screen. Okay, so he says that in the diagram, A, B, C, D and E lies on the central center O. A, O, B angle is 48, D, E, B is 54. Find the angle X. Let me increase the size and show you how I've done this. So here I want to find out the value of the X. If you look at the triangle O, A, B, look at them here. This O, A is the radius. O, B is also the radius. So this O, A, B is an isosceles triangle. So this O, B, in front of this, in opposite to this, we have X. So OA, opposite to this, we will also have X here. So you will have X plus X plus 48 equals to 
one eight. Let me show you my answer. I have done this. Then we will go to the next question. So let me show you. Okay. So here you can see x plus x plus 48 equals to 180. The reason is triangle AOP is an ISO triangle. So 2x is equal to 180 minus 48. So 2x is equal to 132. X will be equal to 132 divided by 2. So x will be equal to 66. So x will be equal to 66. This is the first part. In the second part, he wants you to find out the value of the y. You can see here, this db chord, can you see this db chord? This db chord comes to the center. The angle subtended by the db chord at the center is y. And the angle subtended by the db chord at the circumference is 54. So this angle at the center will be twice the angle at the circumference. So 2 into 54, 108. Hopefully you understand this db was on the circumference. It went to the center and it also went to the circumference. So the angle at the center, the angle subtended by the chord at the center is twice the angle subtended by the chord on the circumference. So the angle at the center is two times the angle at the circumference. This is the reason you would write. So y is equal to two into 54, that's 108. So hopefully you understand. Then the question is find the angle Z. If you look at carefully, B, C, B, E, B, C, B, E. Look at them carefully. D, C, B, E, it's a cyclic quadrilateral. D, C, B, E is a cyclic quadrilateral and the C and E, they are the opposite corners of that cyclic quadrilateral and their sum will be 180. Cyclic quadrilateral is that quadrilateral whose uh, four words, all of the four vertices are on the circumference. The sum of the opposite uh, angles in the cyclic quadrilateral on the vertices is the angles in the vertices in the cyclic quadrilateral Opposite vertices, their sum is 180. So you will write Z plus 54 will be equal to 180. Technically, we say angles in the opposite segments are supplementary. Angles in the opposite segments are supplementary. So Z plus 54 will be equal to 180. Z will be equal to 180 minus 54. And Z will be equal to 126. Z angle will be 126. It's a cyclic quadrilateral, D, C, B, E. Have a good look on this question. This is question number 22. We are done with this question. I hope that uh, you have good practice in the uh, in the circle properties. This is uh, chapter number 13, I think, uh, from the D3, circle properties. Okay, so let's move to the next question. This was the question. Let me reduce the size and so see the whole question. This was the question, 22. We are done with this question. X value, Y value, Z value. Okay, so here we have the question number 23 on your screen. In the diagram, the circles with the center O and Q touch at P, where O, P, Q is a straight line. The line O, R, T intersects the smaller circle at R and is a tangent to the larger circle at T. OR is 4 centimeter and RT is 6 centimeter. The radius of the largest, largest circle is X centimeter. Calculate the value of the X. Very simple. It's a four mark question. Very simple question. You see this angle here is 90 degrees. So this OTQ triangle is a right angle triangle. This side is 10. This side is X. This is X. This is 4. So this OQ sign will be X plus four. Just apply the Pythagoras and you will be able to find out the side X. So let me show you, I've done this on a paper, very simple question and it's a four mark question. You can see that the OTQ is the right angle triangle. The OT side is 10, the TQ side is X and the OQ side will be X plus four. Apply the Pythagoras, hypotenuse square is equals to perpendicular square plus base square. So X plus four whole square equals to 10 square plus X square. When I will open the x plus 4 whole square, it will be x square plus 8, x plus 16 equals to 10 square is 100 and x square is x square. So x square and x square from both the sides will be cancelled. You are left with 8x equals to 100 minus 16, 8x equals to 84, x equals to 84 divided by 8. X, uh, you can cancel them with 2. So you are left with x equals to 42 divided by 4. Again, you can cancel them with the 2. So x equals to 21 by 2. 
21 divided by 2 is 10.5. So the value of the x is 10.5. X value is 10.5. It's a four mark question, application of the Pythagoras and the circle properties. They, they combined both the concepts and made a new question. Hopefully you have understood this question. This was the question number 23 that is on your screen and you can see that question. So let's move to the next question. The next question will be 24th. The next question is 24th, a very easy question. And after that, the paper will be finished. So that question number 24 is the last question showing up on your screen. Okay, so he says, uh, the, okay. so here we have question number, A matrix A is given that is two, one minus three minus two. He says find A square. A square means matrix A multiply with matrix A. Let me show this. It's a two mark question. Let me show you, sir. Let me show you. So here we go. So matrix A, and he wants you to find out the A square that is A multiply A. So this is how you find A square in the matrix. So A should be multiplied with A, 2, 1, minus 3, 2, minus 2, multiply with 2, 1, minus 3, minus 2. So I will take from, from the first matrix, I will take the rows, and from the second matrix, I will take the columns, and I will multiply them, 2 multiply 2, 4, 1 multiply minus 3, minus 3. 2 multiply 1, that will be 2, 1 multiply minus 2, that will be minus 2. From then the second row will start, it will multiply with the first column, then it will multiply with the second column, First members multiply with the first member. The second member of the row multiplies with the second member of the column. So minus three multiply two minus six minus two multiply minus three. That's plus six. And minus three multiply one. That gives you minus three minus two multiply with minus two. That gives you four. So four minus three. That's one. Two minus two. That's zero. Minus six plus six. That's zero. Minus three plus four. That's one. So this is the value of the a square. This is how you you will find the a square, a square, a square, a square of a matrix. So that's a part in front of you. I hope you have understood this. Let's move, check what's the next part. The next part coming up on your screen, it's, uh, let me reduce the size, you can see the marks also. It's a two mark question. He wants the value of the matrix X. Here you have a two by two matrix, which X multiplying with that two by two matrix. And where's my image? So this is so this X matrix is multiplying with this two by two matrix, and the answer is this so, uh, one by two matrix. And I, I want to find out the X value. So this matrix needs to go to the other side. It's multiplying here, but it will go on the other side. It's it will become its inverse. And because it's on the second location on the right, on the left side, sorry, this is this matrix is on the second position on the left side. When it will go on the other side, it will be also on the second position. So let's move to the next part. I will take this to the other side. It will become inverse. Let me show you talking. Very simple and straightforward question. In this paper, this is the second time. In this paper, this is the second time we have in this paper. Um, just one part is left. And I'm sorry, something happened with the. I think something happened with the internet. And yeah, we have the screen. Just one minute is left and hello. Okay, so at the last we were just left with the so there is something. Let me, okay, so here we have what I will do. Um, I think the recording is still on, something happened with the internet. 
all of a sudden. So just this is the last part of that paper. I'm sorry for the internet. This happens, it's normal for us. Okay, so x and two, one minus three minus two equals to zero two. I will take this matrix, it's on the second location, but it will go on the other side. It's inverse will be also on the second location. So I will find this determinant, the determinant is minus one. So I will write the determinant one by determinant first, then I will write this matrix, and then I will write the adjoint of this matrix. And here you can see their positions have been changed, their signs have been changed here. Then I will multiply here, zero multiply with the minus two, that will be zero, two multiply three, that will be six, zero multiply with minus one, that will be zero, two multiply two, that will be four. So minus one, this minus one outside, so it will be six, four. So when minus will multiply minus six, minus four. So this is how you find the value of the X. And you see in this paper, in this particular paper, uh, I think we are doing October, November, 2021 to paper. In this paper, this is the second time you have to find out the, you have to actually calculate the inverse of a matrix. This is the second time in the same paper, you have to find out inverse of a matrix. So that's how you see, this is very important concept to find out the inverse of a matrix. So this is how you do the question number 24. So my dear students, we are done with this paper and let me. So this was question number 24 and we are done with this. Uh, hopefully uh, my dear students, uh, today have, you have learned a few new tricks uh, in mathematics. Today we have done October, November 2020, Mathematics Syllabus D402412 paper. This paper is paper one. We normally call it paper one. This paper was from the zone two. And if this paper is helpful to you, if you are understanding the mathematics concepts, especially when you are doing the paper practice, if this video is helpful to you. Um, please subscribe to my channel and also uh, press the bell icon. And also hit the like buttons. And uh, if these videos are helpful to you and you think it's helpful, please suggest these videos to your friends. By sitting at your home, you can practice your mathematics papers. So I hope this will be a, a blessing for you and for me also. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day and God bless you all.